Okay, well, hi everyone. Sorry, I was hi. a couple minutes late here. Um, and we're, we, we don't have a quorum at this point, but maybe we will have a quorum before the meeting is over. Um, so let's pause on approval of minutes. Um, Bob Andrews, it's great to see you here. Sorry for the late notice. Hi. And Kelly Hebert, nice to see you here as well. Thank you for joining us. And um, Aaron Stevens, um, I think that the Junction Park safety plans are going to move later in the meeting um, because Marsha Rasmussen will be joining us, but she said she wouldn't be able to join until around 5.30. So Aaron, why don't we ask you to share a little bit about the town and communications and how all of that works and maybe what we can do to, um, to get our message out. Sure, yeah, thanks for having me, everybody. I'm um, really excited to talk to you all. I know a couple people on the call. Um, yeah, so I guess I'll just go over a little bit about what the public information position is. Um, it's really about getting information out to people. So whether that is community groups, um, whether that is um, individuals that have specific interests, or if it's just kind of um, having that line of communication that's open. So a lot of what um, I do is I will get things that are from the town, whether it is a, uh, a news related item or a flu clinic that's coming up, you know, things like that. We find ways to get the information out. Um, one of our best ways to get information out is called news and notices. Um, that's through the town's website. I'm sure you've all heard of it. Um, and you can also find all the information on the website. It all gets posted on the front page, but that's a direct email into your, um, into your email inbox that allows you to get the information right in front of you. And it's quick and it's easy. Um, and we can put links to other things. So it's a really great way to disseminate um, what needs to get out from the town. We try to be careful about what goes through that because as everybody knows, the more emails you get, the more emails you ignore. So <laughs> just like what I call poster blindness. If you see something 20 times, you stop looking for posters anymore. So we try to be careful about how often we're putting things out. Um, a lot of times, if for instance, we have an event coming up, I'll try to put something out um, about a month ahead of time if it's a big event. And then again, about uh, two weeks or a week ahead of time, just so that people um, they get sort of an idea and they go, oh, maybe I'll mark my calendar. And then you give them more information as the date comes up and they're actually looking for that information and you're giving them that reminder as well. Um, another great way that we get information out is social media. Um, I apologize, my dogs are barking, hold on. <laughs> Close the door so you can't hear them quite as well. <laughs> um, but social media is another great way to get things out, especially since we can really, uh, we have quite an audience and there are ways to disseminate it beyond who's already following us on social media. So even if somebody hasn't sort of signed up to follow us, we have ways of getting it out to a larger audience. So if it is something that is of interest to the area, like for instance, when we were um, hosting COVID vaccine clinics, and we had more vaccine that we, than we needed at the time, we were able to get that information out to the different communities to, you know, to Wayland, to Acton, to Sudbury, to all these different places that may not have had the same access or gotten it, the same number of doses so that we could bring those people in and hopefully get that information to them as well. So there's, um, we really like to disseminate information in a couple of different ways because of that, as well as more traditional methods like newspapers or posters, postcards, things like that. Um, postcards, we only do on occasion because they are very expensive, not only to print, but also to ship out to people's mailboxes. Um, but if there's something that really needs to get out there, we will, we will do that. Um, I'm also a big fan of trying new things. 
we did a, um, a bookmark. We left a bunch of bookmarks for the housing production plan at the library. I figured that's a sort of clever idea. People need bookmarks when they get a book. Um, <laughs> so we tried different things as well to try to get the information out there. Um, Cause you never know what's gonna click with somebody. Somebody might walk past a poster 12, 20 times and then they see that bookmark and they go, oh, I need a new bookmark. And then you have to have somebody else following along with um, whatever your event or public forum is. Um, so those are kind of the, the big things of how we get the information out. Um, my position is both dealing with that as well as um, I do a lot of graphic design. I do a lot of working with um, different departments and community groups trying to um, help them really formulate how they're going to get information out, um, how to present it in a way that people are going to really engage with it. Um, we try to uh, redo websites and things like that to make sure that the information is something that is accessible and something that is visually appealing so that it catches somebody's eyes as opposed to just a big block of text that you're going to just skim through and not really absorb anything. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of interesting work. Um, I do a little bit of everything. I always like to say that no two, do, no two days are the same. And that's part of what I like about it, so especially working with the town. You never know what's coming down the pipeline. Um, but I do, I do a little bit of everything. Um, and that's kind of the, the basics of me um, and my role as the PIO for the town. Um, in terms of increasing the, you know, the presence of the commission and the work that the commission's doing, it really depends on what you want to do. There's so many things that can be done. And, you know, there's, although there's only so many hours in the day and we know only so many posters we can put out. So <laughs> it's, it's easy if you have something that you want to express to people, or if you want to, you have a mission that you want to be putting forward and events, events are great ways to sort of drive people to, um, to learn more about you. Or if you have say a, um, there's an event that's coming up like Ag Day and you want to have a presence there. That's another great way to sort of engage with people. Um, it, really, it really depends on what what's the commission wants to be doing and, you know, happy to, happy to try to figure out the best ways to get information out. So I think, yeah, go ahead, Bob. Uh, uh, I was just waving at my wife whose face oh, appeared okay. in a crack in the door. <laughs> okay. Hello. Yeah, she is. Hi. Um, Hi. I think we we try to, you know, present ourselves as a resource to the community um, as a group that can provide some um, assistance, whether it's to individual members of the community who have a concern or an issue about accessibility or um, to, to businesses and, you know, trying to support better accessibility in the town. I think that's really our role and, and the, the pathway that we have followed. Um, it's been difficult, Erin, I think we, so often see people come to us after something has happened or after something's been built or after there's a complaint and you know hope that we can fix it for them mm -hmm. and that while we'll we do our best with those things if we can can be on the front end and, and be something that's a little more top of the mind for the community. I think that our services can be much better used. So the first thing that comes to mind for me at least is, yeah, you wanna be proactive. You wanna be showing people what is available as opposed to being reactive later or sort of you know trying to say to people, here's what you should do next time. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, I think that doing something like some sort of a, um, like a pamphlet or an infographic that we could, you know, could print out, you could give to businesses, for instance, and say, 
You may not need it now, but here's something to, you know, to pin up on your bulletin board so that when, if something comes up that you're thinking about or you're just kind of curious, here's some basic information, here's some resources and, you know, come to us if you ever want to talk. Let's, you know, let's be a, um, let's be a resource and not a behind the scenes, let's see what happens later. Mm -hmm. um, I think too that, um, I think that there's probably a spot for creating some sort of, you know, if we did create some sort of pamphlet or guidebook, that that could also go someplace on the town's website that um, maybe in the, you know, ADA accessibility section or somewhere that's uh, easy to find so that when people are looking for basic information, it's accessible to them and quick to find and easy to read. Did you and take that's, my, my that's huge is you really want to have something that people aren't just, um, you know, they, they see uh, a pamphlet that has just a bunch of information. I think it sort of shuts people down mentally. You're not necessarily wanting to engage as much as if it has, you know, it has some, uh, some pictures and some different color breaks and things like that, that really help to better visually engage you. Um, and that could really be used to, um, to help be proactive, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm Jennifer, you have a, a, a question or comment and then, <laughs> so then Bob. Aaron, I, I, thought, I, I thought about this totally differently. I was like, well, how can we help you as the public information officer? And in other words, um, you know, how do you reach people who don't see very well? Do you have, do you have printed material? A lot of seniors and folks who came to their full adult life long before computers were available may not be as um, comfortable with a digital media where you can expand text and so on. So I'm curious to know how the public information office, like how, how information is distributed, say for example, about Ag Day, how, how, do you, how do you typically reach everyone, even those who may be low vision or who have less mobility or access to computers? That would be my first question. And I don't expect that you might have answers for all these things, Erin. I don't want to put you on the spot, but as the disability, as a commission on disability, I feel like that's a role we can help the town play, not just I, so I really appreciate all of the all of the efforts to make our commission more visible to the to townspeople. But I also feel like most importantly, the town offices and town commissions and town committees don't like they don't look to our commission as often as I think it would be helpful for them to do that. So um, what I know, Jean and I, we've been trying to we, our commissions been trying to do is invite folks from the town offices and from town commissions and committees to come to our meeting so that they help help them understand you know, what, what we might be able to do. Um, so as you can see, we've got people on our commission um, who are all connected to the disability community in some way or the other. And so we have our own um, sort of way of reaching out as well. So I don't know, that's just, that's, I was just thinking about it kind of the other way around. So if there's ever a time when you, know, you need just to bounce something off the wall in terms of getting information out, I, that, that, it's really one of the hardest, you already nailed it on the head, right? Like getting people to pay attention, you know, you can, you're kind of throwing everything at them and you're not sure what's sticking. Um, sometimes it can be overload. So, um, but there's just as many people in the community who I think just don't get any of that information. And so we often find ourselves brainstorming about what are good ways to do that. Sometimes it's just meeting in person, like showing up at one of, at the Ag Day with a table and talking about the next event at you know at Ag Day to say that that that's how you get this information out, not necessarily just sending out an email blast or um, exactly or right. a postcard. I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's that's one of the the most difficult things that I have found is that, and that's one of the things that when I came on board, they said, "Well, how do you get information out to people?" And I said, "Depends on the person," and it could be I you know I talk to some people that say you know, um, for instance, around town meeting town meeting to, you know, to us who work for the town, it seems like we have blanketed everywhere. You know, there's not a wall in town that isn't wallpapered with, you know, posters for town meeting at this point, but you're always gonna find somebody who, you know, they, um, you know, they, they have small children. And so they, you know, they're very focused on the schools, but haven't necessarily gone to any committee meetings recently or 
they're not very interested in being in any committees and that's fine too. Um, there's always going to be places that we're going to miss people. And so we try to sprinkle things into different places if there is, seems to be some sort of interest. Like for instance, when um, the middle school was coming up to vote, we made sure that there was information going out to the school communities, not just to people who happen to be subscribed to get town information. Um, for something that we think might be of interest to the COA, we try to make sure that we are printing things in, um, it's not only going online or into their newsletter, but it's also getting print, we're getting printed materials in, you know, in large print or in large format as much as possible. Um, and trying to, you know, trying to really be cognizant of how different people get information in different ways. And we wanna to try to get that out as many ways as possible. Um, it can be difficult at times, especially you know, if, if we put everything um, into the COA's newsletter in large print, I think it'd be a, a thick book, but <laughs> we try to put as much information as we can and keep it um, succinct enough that people can go and find more if they need the COA's, you know, they're very up on what's going on in town so that they can help provide that extra information if somebody says, well, I saw this, you know, the short one line thing about, some agriculture fair that's coming up. Can you tell me more about that? Then they can, you know, they can explain a little bit more as to what's going on and how they can get involved. Do they want to go? Maybe we can you, we can arrange the, you know, the Seaway van to come pick you up and drop you off, you know, things like that to try to get everybody involved. Um, one of the things that our website does too um, is for e-readers on, you know, on the computers, there is accessibility text available for, um, for images and things like that. We're trying to go back through when we have time um, to older images to try to add that in, at least to say uh, what if there's text on an image or something like that, what the text says. So at least there's something there because they, they don't give us a lot of room, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and saying, you know, an image of a, you know, of a farmer isn't necessarily very helpful if there's more into the into the text. So we try to we try to give what we can. Um, but that's kind of the basics, but I'd be, you know, I think that there's obviously there's always a lot of room to grow and I, you know, I'd be really excited to, to work with the commission more when things come up like this to make sure that we're doing the best that we can and that, you know, I'm sure you all have so many other ideas and things are just trickling in your head all the time and feel free to, you know, send me an email with those kinds of ideas as well. Bob Andrews, you had a, a comment or question and then Meryl. Yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, not as clear as I could be about uh, how you might, you know, reach out to a, a specific category of uh, people with accessibility issues, for example, hearing, which is my special interest. Uh, and, and sometimes maybe um, reach out not just to give them information but to get information mm -hmm. you know from them about what you know what accessibility difficulties and frustrations they're experiencing sure um so in terms of most of the most of the information that we put out is typically in print so luckily that's not much of a, a hearing accessibility issue for those types of print uh things um at least less so, <laughs> but for um, for things that are, um, for instance, um, trying to get information back, I would I would sort of point to um, doing surveys or working with groups like the commission, like the COA, that deal with people more often who have hearing assistance needs. Um, the problem with that I have with surveys is that I'm sure you all know you get uh, surveys quite often because everybody knows that surveys are a great way to get information, um, but we all have survey fatigue and so it can be it can be difficult to get um, people to fill out surveys and having five or six people can be helpful to fill out a survey, but you really want a lot more than that to really get a better sort of sense of the community and what people are looking for. Um, in terms of getting more information, I typically turn to places like the COA um, because they are working more with people with hearing assistance issues. Or um, I know that I've worked directly with some people when they were having some issues before with you know hearing aids hooking up to um, 
for instance, at town meeting and things like that. I may not be an expert, but I'll certainly try to figure out how we can how we can help um, get the get your hearing to be sort of up to snuff in our, in our uh, public meetings. So um, those are those are kind of the things that uh, I do. If you if you have other suggestions, we're you know we're always happy to to listen and learn. Meryl, Meryl, you I, got it. Yes, I had, um, I just wanted you to repeat what the, the website is um, on the town, what's it called? Because believe it or not, I've never looked for it. So if you could, sure. and, and also to make it known, um, I wondered if the COA had that information. Um, for, the, for the town's website? Yeah, the town's web, what, what did you call it specifically for information? You mentioned it on the town's website. Oh, had, it's called news and notices. News and notices. Yeah, okay. there's a- And is that, isn't that something that people have to sign up in order to receive? Yes. Um, so, so Meryl, you wouldn't receive those emails right. unless you've given the town your email address and permission to send them to you. Um, right. But that, that is something that we could make sure we let people know about um, on our end too, Erin. So Meryl, like getting, making sure COA, like, I think that's where you're going with that, right? Right. That's exactly where yeah. I'm going. Because yeah. I don't, I wonder if the COA is aware of that. Um, they're, they're somewhat insular <laughs> over there. And um, I was thinking that it would be, it would be nice for you to be able to communicate with them. Their newsletter is packed with yeah. their activities, but it would be really nice them to have some sort of format um, in, in a calendar form of what's happening around Concord because they, they have what's happening in the COA and everybody goes to that section that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people read that I and mean, we have a big population of people over 55. And I was thinking that, that that's the one printed form that people can get. And um, maybe someone from the town could, could emphasize to the COA. And, and I think it would be appropriate for you to say that you're reaching out to um, the community to, to try to um, get uh, notices, you know, to the whole population, mm -hmm. and that would, even though it's it's, I real they really are reluctant to put in community information into their newsletter, but I think when the town says, um, you know, we really need you to do this, maybe it will have a little more weight. Yeah, I I actually um, work frequently with the COA. Um, Ginger's on my speed dial. So <laughs> we, we work frequently together. Um, and we actually, we do have a, um, a news and notice how to, to help people sign up. Cause we've, we've had this question before. Um, oh. Oh. <laughs> the problem is you have to get to the, the how to in order to sign up. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> It used to be very easy to access during COVID. We tried to make it very simple for people to find the information, but we mm -hmm. uh, we moved it when we felt that uh, people were becoming blind to it and just were scrolling past it. So um, that's certainly something we could send out. I'd be more than happy to work with the COA to put something together. Um, and Meryl, we can get you signed up for news and notices if you want, because we got you signed up for the transportation committee. I did. I know, I know that we can get you signed up for that. We got you signed up for the emails. So. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So I have have um, just a wonder: does does the town connect much with the Concord Journal? Uh -huh. Good question. Does anybody? 
<laughs> Does anybody? Yeah, like what's up with the Concord Journal? <laughs> A house in Belmont, really? <laughs> Um, so we do, we do send things to the Concord Journal. Um, we no longer have a reporter that is specifically for Concord. That's who mm -hmm. I used to work with. And um, we used to have a little bit more, I would say, pull with the Concord Journal and that we, we were a little bit more successful in getting things in um, than we are now. I think that has become a little bit more regionalized now. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're... We're not necessarily sure if things that we put out are actually getting into the Concord Journal or not, um, but there is a, um, a new newspaper that's supposed to be starting soon, so we're hopeful mm -hmm. that that will also um, help mm -hmm. to get some information out, and we'll see. Um, maybe it'll become extremely popular, and it'll be a, a great new form of um, ways to get mm -hmm. information out and a new way to get your news. True, true. Well, Concord Bridge, and I, my understanding with that is that it at least initially for a period of time, it will be sent to every home in Concord free of charge. So that should be a great way to communicate. Janet, did you have a question? Did you say it would or would not? Because I had heard that it would be sent free of charge. Yes. Well, yes. Yeah. 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 And I mean, yeah. Now I have a question. I have a quick question. First of all, I want to apologize for being late. I slept in. Um, took a nap and I woke up at 10 minutes past five. And I see that Bob is here. Is Bob a new member of the committee commission? So Bob still does need to have the select board um, finalize or whatever they do. Um, but okay. he has been recommended. Right. Okay. Thank you. I just, I'm. Yeah. Jennifer? Uh, when, when are the select board going to uh, act on that? Well, at their next meeting or the one after that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You typically have to be nominated and then the next one you're appointed. I see. Right. Well, maybe I'm premature in being here. <laughs> we well, can, you can be here anytime as a yeah. guest. Yeah. It's never okay. premature. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to go back real quick with Aaron on the news and notices. You know, um, I'm pretty sure you can ask, you can, you can, identify which news and which mm -hmm. notices from which parts of the town you're interested in receiving, right? Or is it just the one newsletter? So there are separate ones for specific items. Like for instance, um, there is a, um, a white pond notification for um, if there's any changes to the water status, things like that. Right. Um, there's, a, there's a couple, you know, specific ones like that, but the news and notices is, um, it is it's our sort of blanket for anything that's coming from the town. So you're gonna get everything from, um, from Ag Day to schools open to right. uh, here, you know, here's the news about the, um, uh, the power outage last night, you know, things like that. So it's, right. it's everything and it's our blanket um, service. So I'm wondering if one of the more important things we could do proactively is teach people how to find the place on the website where they can sign up for information mm -hmm. and sign up for the information that they want to receive. So like you said, news and notices is only one aspect of all the information and stuff that's going on in town. Um, so I wonder if there's a, like, is there a, again, it's just a, just a 20 minute step-by-step, step. this is where you go, this is how you sign up, this is where you choose what you want to receive and it comes directly to your, to your inbox. Um, mm -hmm. I just, I think that's, a, it seems very simple, but it might be a, the most direct way to get as much, you know, to get a, a lot more people on board with information. It's just teaching them and letting people know how to do that. Mm -hmm. it, um, and I'm not sure what the forum would be and how to get people to get to pay attention to, to learn how to do that. Um, but maybe it's through the library. Uh, maybe there's a maybe there's a handout at the library, which is step one, step two, step three, step four. You know, right next to the checkout for the books. Um, I love. I just wanted to say one one thing. I love your idea about the bookmark. I think getting out of our comfort zone with regards to communicating is a great idea. I just, if you could keep doing things like that, I think it would be really excellent. I I, mm -hmm. I love that idea. Um, and in terms of just making it easier, instead of constantly throwing information let's leave the information in one place but make sure people really know how to get to it 
Um, so that's just the thought about, I, I think that's a really valuable resource, news and notices, and it just people just don't know how to get to it or the fact that they have to sign up for it. So yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's funny because um, we've tried before, there used to be a way for us to import email addresses. Um, so if, for instance, people wrote down their email and said, I really want to, you know, I really want to get this. Can you do this for me? Um, the, our website provider sort of changed the way that it works a little bit and that uh, they have to now opt in to subscribe. So that can sometimes go to your junk mail folder or for instance, um, yeah. they actually make us uh, click something now that says, you know, this person has uh, has asked to be added to this notification. So uh, I can import them, but uh, <laughs> there's a few extra steps to the process. So um, I, I have a few things that I'm working on that hopefully will um, help to make it a little bit easier to not only get the notices, but will also um, hopefully uh, make it a little bit broader in its um, distribution. What about a, a little QR code right on the, the main website that just takes you to that section? So it's actually right on um, the left-hand side of the page, of the homepage. It says uh -huh. news flash, um, that it, or notify me, sorry. Um, that is uh, how you sign up. So it, it is very easy in theory. It's just not very intuitive. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the problem with QR codes is that uh, most people actually look at the website on their phone, which QR, QR code doesn't work then. So, right. <laughs> Good right. idea, though. I like the way you're going with this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. News and notices is great. I love it. Um, I think Kelly has a question or comment. And then I'm going to suggest that we move to Marsha because we, we really want to get the update of where things are at for Junction Park. Thank you. I just wanted to make a note on one of the comments earlier. Robert, uh, uh, Mr. Andrews is on the agenda for Monday's uh, select board meeting for the oh. appointment. Oh, right. So that's on for Monday. Awesome. awesome. There. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Um, members, are there are are there further questions for Aaron? Okay, Aaron, thank you so much for coming thank tonight you. for sharing this. And um, I, I would certainly echo Jennifer's um, suggestion that if there's a way that we can help you in your work of disseminating information, please reach out to us either as a, as a group or individually. Absolutely, thank you so much for having me and um, look forward to working with you all. Yeah, thank you. I, I just had one quick comment um, for big events. I, I still like posters in, in a few locations. Uh, there used to be a poster at West, West Concord 5 and 10. Um, oh, yeah. Notices. And any place that you can, you know, put up a poster, maybe at the entrance of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. Um, certainly the library, but um, I was just thinking of a few meeting places where there could be some notices. Absolutely. And if you if you go there in the next couple of days, you'll see one for the housing production plan that we just printed and are putting out tomorrow morning. So <laughs> great, great. Wow. Look for that. Very good. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Erin. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. All right, Marsha. You're on. Good evening. Thank you. Um, it's uh, Junction Park, as you are all aware, has been a hot topic over the past two years, or if not longer. And um, I did provide to Eugene a, a brief memo of where things were. And I've been working on it for the past couple of weeks. Um, I met with Jennifer Brooke on site and we discussed some of the details of it. I put together a PowerPoint presentation to illustrate some of the ideas that we're talking oh, about. Um, if you wouldn't mind, I'll share um, share that with you. Okay, hold on. So I'm sharing this and I'm going to, uh, 
think it'll start from the beginning. There we go. So um, can everybody see that? Beautiful. So um, this uh, dragonfly, I dragonfly icon is for the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail, but we're going to introduce that to Junction Park. And um, we've come up with some ideas for how to how to get people to maybe slow down to realize that this is a, a different kind of space and that they need to pay attention. So um, this this show is going to talk about the existing conditions. I've got the plan and some photos, um, some short term solutions, the plans that the plan that was proposed by the advisory committee. Um, some signage that we're going to be adding or introducing, some entry elements and planters, various options, um, visual screens so that we might uh, screen off the um, the railroad tracks so people don't go in that direction, or at least give an illusion that they're not supposed to be going in that, uh, that direction, and an idea for some painted pavement at the borders near the entry locations. So, uh, these are just ideas, um, but uh, illustrative of the uh, of the concept that the advisory committee put together. So this is the Junction Park as built. Uh, it, it we we um, it, we're the short term solution or concept is to keep the existing layout to not make any major changes, but to introduce some elements. Um, so um, I don't. The, the, the photo on the left upper portion is uh, where the rail trail um, enters into the space that is Junction Park. Marcia, I think your, your slideshow isn't advancing. It's not advancing, thank you. You might have to do that manually. Okay, thank you. Are you able to see this? No. No. Okay. Yes. Stop share. So I'm going to have to do each one individually. All right. <laughs> it's going to make it real challenging, but uh, stop share. Nope. Come on. All right. Okay, we'll be going back and forth a lot. Uh, can you see this? Yes. Okay, so um, it's not going to let me. Nope. Yeah, you might have to just from the column yep. of slides on the left, just pick those. Pick Pick those okay. out. Okay. Wish it could be bigger then. I apologize. Um, so the upper left is picture on the left is where the path currently enters the park. And you can see the little bump out for the drainage area to the right there. The lower picture is where um, it come the path, the rail trail comes across Main Street and enters into the park. And then this the shot in the on the right side shows the straightaway as you make the curve around the path and it just goes straight to the parking lot to the, the um, uh, commuter rail line. Now, are you able to see the advancing of the side? Okay. Yes. This will work. Perfect. So the concept, and and maybe you'll be able to follow follow my pointer now is to add two signs where the trail meets the park, one at the club car cafe here and one at the main street entrance, but into the park here. Um, in, in looking at the site with, with Jennifer, um, we felt that cyclists and uh, walkers and people trying to get through those bollards and into the park might not be paying attention to any signs that are outside of the park. So if we located it inside, they would um, they may take better notice and slow down. Then the next concept is to add, add some planters at each entrance. So an, an arch or obelisk in this location, just outside of the park on the pavement. And at this location, again, just outside of the park on the pavement. Uh, to define and and provide some vertical elements that would define that as something different as a as an entrance experience. 
Um, then to look at some uh, possibly three planters with a trellis uh, near the existing bollards uh, in this location near the commuter rail line. They would be staggered so people could walk among them or through them, around them, but visually it would look, if you were going through the park, it would look like something was blocking you or preventing you from going straight through. So it's a visual screen. And then to add two small planting beds, one in this location and one on this location that would spill over into the pavement, but not inter impede the pavement. So if you are following the edge, say with a, a cane or um, if you were blind and following that edge, it wouldn't interfere. You'd, you'd feel the plants, but you wouldn't be precluded from going in a straight line. But the plants would provide a visual element that might make people think, oh, this is something different. It's not as wide as I thought it was. So to <laughs> reduce or visually narrow the path. And then the next concept was to add a colorful border at this point outside of the park on Main Street. Here at where the trail enters by the Club Car Cafe and here where the platform, um, the commuter rail platform slopes down and enters the park. And then <coughs> to remove, there are two tiny signs that say walk your bike, we would get, get those out of the park. So the signs that are being considered for another project along the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail are wayfinding signs. And these are two options that we could look at for Junction Park. One is 30 inches wide by 90 inches tall, and the other is 50 inches wide and, and uh, 117 inches. So it's it's like, it's quite tall, um, almost nine feet, 10 feet tall. But it would say, welcome to Junction Park, please slow your pace in this special place. I don't know if that's too corny, if it's not enough, but at least it's letting people know that they need to slow down. They're in some place different, some place special. Um, and if you have better language to suggest, I'm willing and ha happy to hear it. Um, next are the planters. And so I, I've come up with five different types of planters numbered, uh, labeled A through E. And then um, looking at either creating an arch, we, we, I don't think an arch will work at Main Street because we have existing trees that are kind of low. But here uh, on the Main Street side, we could use an obelisk. These are seven feet tall so that they would provide a really dramatic uh, vertical element. And these, um, the arches would have to be at least 10 feet wide um, and probably 10 feet high to allow a cyclist to safely move, maneuver through. But again, creating that entry kind of experience to let them know they're entering someplace special. Um, then ideas for, um, uh, just go back for one minute. So we can go very simple with a wooden type fence that won't hold up as well. There are metal planters rather. Um, this is an aluminum planter. This is Corten steel that weathers and turns this lovely brown orange color. There are plastic planters. This is a self-watering planter that could, could provide a nice element. And then this is also plastic, but it looks very much like the existing planters that are in the park and provide that um, a rounded element. Um, then we have the, the planters with trellis or a screen. We could we can include plants in them, um, but by providing um, an actual screen, it gives that uh, visual screening that we want to have year round, whereas plants would not be a year round element. And so again, wood or metal are the options that we'd be looking at. Um, and then pavement markings, the borders. And um, these are some really uh, clever ideas for how to make people, uh, it's sort of like a welcome mat. Jennifer called it a welcome mat. You know, you're, you're changing, you're, you're moving from one place to another. You're being invited into this gorgeous little park that is, is such a gem. It's like our, your living room or, or a special place for, to gather. So we want to inform people that they're making a change. They're, they're entering something special and um, maybe have our local artists provide um, painting. It could change every year, but these are some elements that are very simple and yet 
create that um, that space to to change. So those are those are the things that we're thinking about right now. Um, I still have to get some um, input on the long term plan. Um, that's this plan, where the path is separated from the park. There might be an element over the existing drainage area or uh, a, an actual path on the pavement and, and relocate the, the drainage area, um, creating a, a less wide, a, a narrower walking path within the park, um, again, more curvilinear so that it doesn't have that straightaway feel to it. But that will require some, uh, some for two different studies, one on is it necessary, do we really need it, and two, the design and construction. So that's where I am with the plan. Um, and I know you had wanted to hear what ideas are being put forward. Um, I still have meetings scheduled with the advisory committee, with Public Works, um, and with the uh, West Concord Green Thumbs later this month, um, hopefully re putting the plan to, uh, report together to the select board for their October 3rd meeting. Questions, input. Thoughts. <laughs> Meryl. I just, I love the idea of um, a painted pathway, um, I, especially with flowers or swirls, um, because I think people would be less reluctant to quickly run through it. You know, it's like stepping on the flowers and you don't want to do that. So I, I, that really appeals to me. Yeah, I really like that you've taken a multi approach to this. Oh, it's you know, wonderful. Some, some planters, some visual cues, some, some painting, some, some signage. Um, I think this, the, these ideas could be very helpful to slow down that traffic because, you know, I think from our perspective, it's never been about, we don't want bikes to go through Junction Park. It's been about just making sure that it's safe for everyone there. What I'll probably be doing is posting this um, update. I'll have to update it as I go along, but posting this um, maybe tomorrow on the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail Advisory Committee webpage. So if you wanna go back and look at things and maybe offer some of uh, your thoughts on which planter would work best um, or different language for the sign, um, you know, nothing's in stone yet. Um, we do have uh, some funds available through the uh, Community Preservation Committee for the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail. So I think this is a great opportunity to apply mm -hmm. A portion of those funds, it's yeah, thirty thousand dollars was approved this year's town meeting. Um, I can seek additional funding if we don't have enough. Uh, there's another project that is also going on, so I want to balance those two uh, with the funding available. But I, I don't think that this, these are high cost elements. Um, the 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 arch is probably the most expensive component, and our early estimates are like one to two thousand dollars. It might be. Mm -hmm. so. That's great. Yeah, Jennifer. Marsha, I have opinions about everything, as you know, um, but the planters in particular, um, the um, I love the idea of a core 10 or metal planter because this is Junction Park and it is it's where uh, the industrial age um, kind of meets the modern the modern age in in transportation and materials and connectivity and all those good things. So at a metaphorical level, I love the idea of a metal plant of metal planters. Core 10 planters are beautiful until they rust and create that protective, rusted, beautiful surface. Until that happens, they do leach. So when water falls on them and runs down the side, they carry some of that rust and rust color and it will stain the surfaces underneath it until it's until it completes its kind of uh, encasement mm -hmm. of the of the metal. So it may be 
um, it may be something to be mindful of if it's um, over anything other than say asphalt. Um, I think we have asphalt in both of those locations, right? So, but it's just something to be mindful of, but I think that would be really lo lovely. But the other thing to think through is the maintenance of this. And um, this isn't a disability specific concern, but it's nice when um, the plants live and um, <laughs> and as you know, and uh, so the opportunity to have to water it less, uh, a self like a, a planter that has a reservoir, it could potentially be, um, it could make it more successful as as a long term solution, right? I think mm -hmm. you you just said at the end of your presentation, there's we have to wait and see. We're not going to run off and start re configuring drainage systems and adding new paths and making these big physical changes until we know if these short-term solutions have some impact that's positive. If those planters are full of living, beautiful, you know, admirable um, vegetation, then we're going to have a lot more success. So I, and I just know with, with we've, we had a short conversation about this. So this is really just for the ears of everyone else is, is that we want to make sure that it's easy to take care of. Um, there's nothing worse than a planter that's got dead plants in it. I mean, oh, truly nothing yeah. worse. <laughs> so, thank you for all yeah. your work on this. I, I, it's, there's so much, there's so many um, background diagrams and background meetings and background information you've had to collect to get this far. So um, the dis from a disability commission perspective, if we can, if we can get this special place to be on the minds of everyone as a special place, I think we will have gotten very far in our efforts to make it a safer for everyone. So. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Well, certainly Marcia and Jennifer as well. We're really grateful to you for your, for your time and your expertise and input to, to pull something together that, that can accomplish the, the goal of keeping this as a nice park and making it safe and usable for everyone. I, I will put in my own personal little two cents. I love the, the planters with the trellises. <laughs> I think those could be really, really very pretty. And, and the, you know, the double duty of being able to be some barrier during the winter. Mm -hmm. Asking um, just, my, my personal preference is for one type over another. Did any of those trellis designs speak to you? Like wood versus metal, the naturalistic versus the uh, geometric? Me personally, this is just my own personal taste. I, I like the idea of the metal. I think Jennifer, you, that's perfect. Um, and I liked the one that was more, um, free form, if you will, or, or looked more like a plant growing up okay. versus just a, a geometric crisscross. That's helpful. Thank you. That, that looks pleasing to my eye. Maybe not everybody. Do we, do we have any artists in town who do laser cut metal panels? I'm I mean, sure we do somewhere. That be, like, like just what Jean was saying, like that, that it's an opportunity to, um, it's an opportunity to showcase some of the really amazing unseen, under, underappreciated talent in West mm -hmm. um, I Yeah, have, I wonder if Margo would know. Yeah, she might there's know. Someone. Um, she's a great resource, so um, I can. Um, perfect. Okay. Other comments, questions? I think it's a nice idea to use any local talent. Oh, can. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But we want to provide some parameters, I think, mm -hmm. in terms of the of borders course. and what they look like. Um, you know, I think having some visual cues is really, really important. Um, I'm, I'm partial to the, the flower, the floral type, but um, you know, there's some big spaces out there and, and we wanna be, the nice thing is it could be done on an annual basis, you know, put down a new, new pattern every year and celebrate what's going on in, in West Concord. Mm -hmm. you know? 
to be fun. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Well, I appreciate your yeah. input. I, it, this is early in the process, uh, or early in my process. Um, yeah. I, I got held up with some things in, going on in, in August. So I'm yeah. really um, trying to pull everything together so that I can have these conversations and and put forward um, a report to the select board. So that's that's the goal. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for your time to come to the meeting tonight. I know you had a meeting before this, you've got a meeting after this, so thank you. So, all right, then I'll head on out to my next meeting. <laughs> so, thanks very much for your time. Okay, bye, thank you. Um, so, Linda, I see you're you're here with us. That gives us a quorum to be able to um, approve the minutes from the last meeting. Bob, you won't be able to vote this time, but um, by our next meeting, you should be a full approved member. Okay. Okay. And I know there need to be a couple of uh, changes in here. Um, did Janet, did Karen get back to you about what recordings we need to post? Janet, you're yeah. still mute. Yeah. You uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, what was my question to Karen? Um, what recordings do we need posted? I missed this. No. I missed the referred to below. Okay. No, but there was, I had another question Was it that somebody answered. Uh, I think maybe it was, yeah, Karen. Mm-hmm. Um, did I, and I didn't send you the corrected, oh darn, I don't have that in front of me, so I don't know what that, I don't know what that question referred to, okay. um, but whatever it was, she, Karen got back to me right away. Okay. And did so, I have another question in there? Um, something needed clarification. Um, Oh, just hybrid setting up hybrid meetings. Um, maybe, maybe what we should do is is postpone approval of these minutes until the next meeting and give a chance for Karen to give her input. And she um, did that, and I thought that I had sent it out with her, with her. Yeah. Uh, I didn't do that. I thought that I had done that. No, I guess she got back to me after. Okay. Yeah, right. we I can, we sent can, these out last night. We can we can hold it until next meeting. That okay, should. I'll send I'll send out them. I'm sorry I was so late with them. I really forgot that it was September first when it was September first. Oh yeah, September has really crept up on us. <laughs> um, but I will I will do them again and send them out again with her with whatever she's whatever she corrected, and the second thing. I don't have them in front of me, so I don't know what the second thing was. And I'll check okay. on I'll check on that and ask whoever. Okay. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Um, October is Disability Employment Month. So that's coming right up. Um, just one thing to, to let you all know, um, I'm gonna do a presentation to the select board on, I believe it's October 24th. Um, mostly sharing with them a little bit about Minuteman Arc, but I'm also happy to share information about this group if you all would like me to do that at the same time um, and some of the work that, that we've done. Um, I think, Linda, you've been a, a great um, connection for us to the select board and um, been able to share information back and forth. So that's been really good. And I assume you'll also be talking about um, October Employment Month, right? Absolutely, I will. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and we'll I'll let you know about some of the many employers in Concord that employ people with disabilities. Good, there are a lot of them. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, yeah, and probably everybody knows you walk into Crosby's and you're going to run into David, but but there are many other people all around the community. Jean, real quick on that, I mean, Minuteman Arc is the 
expert of experts when it comes to employment in the disability community. I really, I, I, so I feel so lucky that you're on our committee and that you can speak to our town about that because it's such a involved and nuanced and it's, you have such a successful program. But what am I, I'm just thinking like as the Commission on Disability, that's not really a topic that we've ever really broached as a commission, um, not only from the employee, like people in our community who may wish to be more employed than they are, but we've never really even thought about it from the employer's position either. I don't know whether or how, like, and it's not a question for, for the commission, commission today, but I do think it's useful to just bat this ball around a little bit on our commission to, to understand if it's important and how how we can fit into that conversation or be helpful to citizens sure. and employers in Con in Concord, um, mm -hmm. if, the, if there's a way. And again, you do so much already. I just, I don't wanna make it more complicated, but it's not really a topic we've, we've really tackled and it would be mm -hmm. interesting to know if it's something people are interested in, that's all. Sure, well, I could, I could put that on the agenda for our October meeting and, and share with you a little bit. I, I'll give you the, the one sentence thing, which is employers in Concord are amazingly open to hiring people with disabilities. But I can certainly share more about that and the different, different types of, of positions that, that people are able to hold. Um, and so, I wonder, so, just just off, off the cuff to carry that forward, just one one smidgen is I wonder if there's ever an, a time when these employers need support from the town for things, mm -hmm. whether it's whether it's like the physical access into their buildings from sidewalks or whether it's accessible routes from or or public transportation. I mean, those, I feel like those are areas that we could we could advocate for and, and intercede, sure. you know, at the level of the town. So, mm -hmm. um, so anyway, that's, that's just random thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think for some employees, um, and employers parking is, is an issue, um, which kind of branches me over to, to one other issue that I think you all would want to know about, um, partly because of some advocacy work by the new library director. There are going to be even more parking spaces in the Stowe Street lot. There are actually going to be five handicapped parking spaces, uh, three of them closer to the, the Sudbury Road side, and the other two closer to the Emerson Umbrella. So Kelly was kind enough to, to dig that info up for me and share that. Um, so I think that's, that's a real win for the town. My guess, Jean, is that that's the required number. It does not go over the required number. It's probably because it's two buildings that that parking lot is serving, the, 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 uh, the umbrella and the library. So yes, it is very good that the town is meeting the <laughs> the demands of the law when it comes to um, when it comes to parking. So that's a that's a huge step forward. It was a grandfathered lot before. Now that they're making changes, so um, it will be interesting to see if we continue to need more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I, and that was something that just absolutely didn't occur to me that it, you could really have to add together the two buildings. I was thinking of building, building, right? You know, but yeah. it just shows you how woefully inefficient, how like how little we had prior to that, and um, mm -hmm. and how hard it is to get the public realm up to where the obligations lie. Not mm -hmm. and so going beyond that would always be great, but um, it's great that we, that there's going to be more parking. I don't mean to rain on the parade, but I do think it's an obligation, not a gift. I agree. Yeah. Janet? Um, I was talking to Linda the other day, and we both noticed um, separately, it just sort of came up in conversation, that the library seems to have moved their parking spaces farther in toward 
the library. Is that a change? Have they changed those parking, those street parking spaces? We both notice this sort of spontaneously at the same time. That it, whereas it used to be just two handicapped spots on the street, now it's recessed. Has recessed anybody else in toward the sidewalk? Yeah, that, I mean, that the was... sidewalk has moved, and it has moved so that now the parking spaces are where the sidewalk used to be. Right. Sidewalk has moved. Is that a, is that a change? I think that was part of that bump out parking that they had designed um, that we asked them to do the But before the there were just two signs that said handicapped parking and it didn't, mm -hmm. you know, and so you were exiting onto 62. Now, mm -hmm. so this was the in the original plan. Well, I'm not sure original or not, but it was well, a, well, I mean, in it one was, of the final plans. In one of the final plans, yeah. Yeah. It's it, it, that's what they they had planned after we made a fuss, yeah. Because now it so um it, it is all it's not as accessible as it could have been, but it's better than it was. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I wish they had gone with the on-site parking, but yeah. I will I will continue to complain about that, but <laughs> okay, go for it, Janet. Yeah. We love that. Yeah, well, they can't do anything about it now, but at least they made the spaces more accessible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kelly, I see your hand up. Do you have a comment, Kelly Hebert? Yes, I do. I'm sorry that you can't see me. I am here trying to listen in. Uh, just a quick um, follow up to the last discussion about the library spots. Um, actually, through you know, working with the library director and also with you as well, being more aware. Um, but as the, <coughs> interim, as the interim ADA coordinator, um, the issue of the HP spaces did come to my attention and working with the library director, we were able to secure additional parking. I believe it's at, it's the minimum of one, but quite possibly at least two of the spots were um, and I think that the select board had to approve that, but I wanted to sort of give you recognition for the fact that your work on the disability commission made me that much more aware of the need. And then when the library director said, you know, we have some concerns or issues or, or not issues, but accommodation requests from some of our, you know, some of our staff, uh, we did look at that and I can't tell you, and I don't have the exact number, but I wanted to let you know that because we had that information, we were able to secure additional spots in that, that lot above the conforming number. Um, and really that's because of your advocacy. And I knew that um, you know, there were a number of different issues we wanted to, to deal with. I'll have to get more information with respect to the street parking. And I'm happy to do that. But I just wanted to let you all know that they did go above what was you know, in code um, to add the additional parking for the right reasons. And that's because of the good work that you people are doing on your end to raise awareness and make sure that we're all paying attention to the needs of, you know, not just our staff, all of our residents and all of our visitors. So thank you for that. Thank you, Kelly. We're, we're really happy to have you here with the town and have you attending our meetings. It's really helpful. Um, Kelly, before before we end the meeting, do you want to take just a minute and talk a little bit about the um, municipal grant that you're working on? Sure, I won't take much of your time, um, but again, through our conversations with Eugene and also, you know, having had the chance to meet with you and Ms. Esposito, um, you know, to, to visit you at the ARC, it really did raise, you know, um, quite an awareness of all the work that that you're doing personally but also at the arc and then also just to you know get the town uh thinking about these things what we um what i was trying to do is ada coordinator at least for now in my temporary capacity you know looked for a plan you know what is the roadmap what is the transition plan you know when was the last time we did an accessibility study in the town. And I found a binder, it was about six inches thick. And I thought, huh, 
I wonder how many people know about this. And I asked around and not too many people, but um, fortunately our facilities director, Ryan said, I understand that there's a binder in your office. And so I found the binder and I realized that our last plan was from 2006. So the idea that, that we were talking about was, you know, maybe it's about time we do an updated plan and if we can get a grant to do that work for us, then all the better, right? It, it, I kind of see it as a roadmap or a master plan for other things we should be aware of. Um, you know, the update in uh, ADA in 2010, um, you know, that plan was 2006. Um, I bet there's a lot of things we've checked off that list, but there are changes. So I had suggested and talked with you, as you know, about doing an update to that and working on a grant proposal and also you know found the the last um consulting group that did that plan and have been working with them to come up with some numbers some estimates and perhaps an rfp so thanks to your inspiration we've got that ball um rolling forward and uh that that application will be due at the end of the month before that point i'll be reaching back to you and um seeing if we can get some letters of support so more information to come, but that's really an exciting thing. And, and I look forward to working with all of you on developing that idea a little bit further. That's great. And the grant that Kelly's talking about is the municipal grant through the Mass Office on Disabilities that comes up every year. And, you know, every year I've passed it on to the town and it's really exciting that, that um, Kelly's got a you know, great idea for uh, something that could be a, a huge benefit to the town to apply for. So thank you for your work on that, Kelly, and we'll certainly keep our fingers crossed on the grant and hope that it gets awarded. I think they have quite a few grants to award, so. Yeah, happy to do it. Thank you. Okay, Janet. Kelly, I missed, what would your grant be for? What would it do? This would be an update to the 2006 oh, okay. assessment and a transition plan that's in place for the town. Okay, thanks. The 2000 and what? Six. It was 2006. 2006 plan, okay, thanks. You're welcome. Yeah, Jennifer. Um, quick question, Kelly, would that be like, would, how do you think, I guess it would be, sorry, I'm just thinking out loud. I guess it would matter how much the grant is actually for, if we got it, what kind of assessment we could do? Like, would it, it, would, it wouldn't be a self-assessment. Would it be a third party assessment? Yes, yes. we would be having um, a company and it couldn't be necessarily this company. We have to do an RFP. Yeah. Uh, what we're looking we're, we're looking at possibly up to $100,000 uh -huh. would be our proposal. Right. Um, this grant does allow for up to $250,000, but they really look to communities to number one, have a disabilities commission, uh, which we have. Um, and then second, to make sure that we have a plan of action, that we've done an assessment that it's you know, up to date as much as possible and that we have a plan to address anything that they identify. So this company that I'm referring to, I can't remember the name, but they did it in 2006. And um, that's, that's who I reached out to just to see what they thought about costs. So right. we're looking at about a $100,000 grant to apply for. And Kelly, do you, that sounds good. Do you know, um, of course, the more money you have, the more areas you can include in the evaluation, right? So at this yeah. point, like, if, would it be just like, pub, it would just be public streets or buildings? Do you know, do you have an idea of yes. to what extent? Yes. Yeah. So to that point, though, um, the town does have an updated plan for our public right of ways. All of our streets are sidewalks. That is being coordinated through our public works department. Oh, okay. But what, what, but what is in need of uh, looking at uh, again, assessing again, because it's been so long, is all of our public facilities, right. our buildings, and also the access points around those buildings. Right. And 
And so that's what we're doing. And the only, there's probably one other question and I've reached out to schools with regard to properties that are adjacent to schools. So that's probably one of the, the loose ends I need to tie up and I'll be following up with them next week to see so, what the scope looks like. Right, and that would include schools and if and school facilities like, like fields uh, and tennis courts and things like that that belong to well, the town. At this point, we're looking at just town, not school, but I've left that question uh, open and I'm waiting to hear back from the schools. Now, they right. might come back and say, yes, we're all for it, let's do it. <laughs> um, on the other hand, they might say, you know what, we're not ready. For that right. now and then we look at that maybe as a, a phase two and maybe we look at that for next year but right now my main focus is our facilities Top especially facilities. where we have a new facilities department mm -hmm. um you know giving them a road map giving us the town the opportunity to look at the big picture and then use that to prioritize and make decisions about what needs to be put into the town's capital plan. Right. That makes perfect sense. Thank you so much for clarifying. Can I ask you one more question about the public works right of public right of ways um, plan? Do you know do you know when that assessment was done of the public right of ways? Um, that information I did look at, it is on the website. And when I asked the um, public works um, director about it. I guess what, what I was told was they did it, I think it was in 2016. They okay. came up with a transition plan and of the transition plan, they update that every year and they've incorporated their projects into the town's capital plan. So it right. sounds like they have a pretty good handle on it, which means that we can prioritize the other pieces, which are the town buildings facilities. and also, also public spaces. Mm -hmm. Facilities and public spaces is right. what that would also include. So open spaces, parks, the town parks you know, and things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right on. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Okay. Any last things? Okay. So our next meeting is, sorry, October 13th. So I will see you all on October 13th. Um, if you have nothing to do, or I shouldn't say that, if you would like to attend a really, really fun event, September 17th is the Minuteman March at Alcott School. It is the best party you can imagine. And people who go, it's a short, really pretty short walk, about a mile. And we have vans that go along for people that maybe start out and then change their mind. Um, and people get tie-dye shirts and there's food and music and fun and it's a family friendly event. So come what is the day, Jean? September 17th. 17th. At, at where? At Alcott School. At Alcott. The um, registration it? starts at nine and the march starts at 10. And we're going to have um, from the Red Sox, we're going to have Wally and Tessie, the Red Sox ma uh, mascots there. So that'll be a lot of fun, too. Could I just ask a quick question? Are we doing a booth for Ag Day? We've already had Ag no. Day, I think. No, Ag Day is this Saturday. Oh, it's this oh, Saturday. Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, and so I'm sorry. Not, I know. Not, we, we talked about it and we that got away it. from me. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I was just wondering if I missed something. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So I will see you all in October. Come on the 17th. You're welcome to join us. It's a lot of fun. I have a, I have a question. Okay. Um, you included Linda in the vote for something, I've forgotten what it was. And we, um, we didn't take any votes tonight. Oh, okay. So there wasn't, okay, okay, then you're just asking your opinion. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, see you all next month. Bye. <laughs>